Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation. 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Good morning and welcome back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. I am Phil Brilliant. Substituting for Jeremy this morning, it is Thursday, September 1st. Yes, it is September 1st. It is 6.10 in the morning for all of you who are getting up, getting out, and doing something this morning. And we have two people who have gotten up, and they are out, and they're going to do something all day. It is Linda Keating, the Director of Community Relations, and Frank Evigan, the Executive Director of Brandywine Living of Tom's River. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, I know you guys are wide awake this morning. I am. He's not. He's not. No. <laughs> No, and it was funny too. We actually didn't get the chance, you know, because uh, you know Frank was here on time. Linda was a little late. <laughs> no, no, actually, uh, no, you know, it's reverse. It's Final, re- for once, I'm yeah. always late. Yeah, Frank was touring Tom's River. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but all is good. I actually didn't get a chance to ask ask you who will be the the speaker this morning. So we're just going to go with both of you as we talk about uh, Brandywine Living of Tom's River. So as we get into that, you know, tell me a little bit first. We'll start with Frank. Um, a little bit about yourself, a little bit how you ended up in Tom's River, and a little bit about your position at Brandywine. Sure. Um, I got uh, into the assisted living industry just uh, shy about five years ago. Um, I got into it primarily because my grandmother had Alzheimer's, who I was very close with, and uh, always enjoyed the senior area and being with people. Um, so I had started with uh, Sunrise Senior Living and then joined Brandywine just shy of a year ago already. Um I'm married. I have three children, and I uh, live in Freehold. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Well, Linda, you're up. Well, I, I have such a long history. I think it started out obviously as a kid, being very close to my Shows grandparents. The, we're done with the show at eight o'clock, so yeah, you know, right, give right. us the well, I'm going to give summary. you the shortened version, but <laughs> 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 well, what way, way back in 1980? Now, um, now I actually started out working in um, nursing homes and such because of uh, just just a passion for the elderly, and then. Uh, had an opportunity to, to move into um, assisted living, which was just so much more fulfilling. So I've been with Brandywine, I think it's about 14 years now. Um, and just, you know, being familiar with all the different uh, companies and, and, and whatnot, I felt that they did the best uh, for uh, seniors in the industry. So obviously, you know, with their commitment made me more committed, and, and that's why I've stuck and with it. A- and as I told Linda, I've been mm-hmm. to Brandywine. I was there last year for a Greater Tom's yeah. River Chamber of Commerce event. A beautiful facility. Thank you. Um, yeah. Very good food, by the way. I'd come back anytime you want to feed me. Mm-hmm. Uh, always a good thing. But so tell us um, a little bit about Brandywine, uh, about what Brandywine offers, and what makes them a little different than other assisted living centers. Uh, as well, they look at each other. Yeah, I'm like, I'll let him answer that <laughs> question. But she always makes me take the lead. But yeah. um, Brandywine is, you know... It's definitely a top provider in our market for assisted living when you look all across the country and what we provide. Uh, the biggest thing that I found with Brandywine joining them that separates them from many of our competitors or other providers within the marketing area and across the United States is there's a huge return on investment for what we do. So families are going to pay a little bit more, but the quality and the services that separate us from the normal cookie cutter assisted living industry concepts that are out there identify it. Uh, We have nurses that are on staff 24 hours a day, seven days a week, which when you look at the seniors that are moving into our communities now are at a higher level than it was back in the late 90s, early 2000s. So that peace of mind for a family knowing that a nurse can identify the need, identify the concern, and address it immediately is something that separates us from most who don't keep nurses on 24 hours because it's not part of the regulatory compliance. Um, we offer all day dining, so it's not that cookie cutter. Here's your seatings. This is what you have to do. We keep our kitchens open for our residents. So if they're out with their loved ones, they can come into the dining room and have full service meals with their family members or friends at any point. Um, most importantly, it's the safety component of what we do. Um, and just between the staffing and to resident ratio and kind of how we address the needs and the concerns immediately, I would say separate us. We also try to be innovative in, in programming. Uh, we're always every – we're meeting – we meet often to kind of go over what, what kind of life are we giving them, um, you know, how we, can we stay innovative, how can we make it exciting, not just um, bingo every day, you know. So we have a lot of educational programs, very int- intellectual, very stimulating, 
you know, more than just, you know, crafts with um, popsicle sticks and things like that. It's it's just, it's more advanced. Now, who, I guess, who are really the clients? Who are the, the people who are coming into Brandywine? And when are they coming in? I guess, what are they looking for? Yeah, since I'm the salesperson in a sense, I, I guess the... The clientele is usually, you know, seniors living in the area or the adult children in the area, they're moving their parents back to be closer to them because they obviously want to be a part of their life as as the aging process happens. And we've got a cross-spectrum of people that come to us as far as when when need takes place. Typically, you're seeing, you know, um, know, mom or dad at home and an event happens. Um, In my case, I have my own grandmother have a, a... a big stroke last year and and out of nowhere now she goes from being completely independent to you know after rehab needing more assistance but too much uh for me to take care of to and and too involved for me to have the the live in piece uh she needed the whole the whole piece of life the meals the housekeeping laundry cuz even with a live in I still have to monitor still have to do food shopping so now she's got you know this whole hotel like feel with support service with nursing you know when she's not feeling well with housekeeping laundry and i have sheer peace of mind so that you know that that's typically our clientele and then you'll have other people who are you know more proactive who are aging and are like i can't take care of myself anymore my house is too big i'm all alone you know loneliness in itself is is an issue um, because families are busy we're all working one and two jobs or there's grant you know that everybody has children or grandchildren themselves and you want to be there for your parents, but you're stretched to the max, and that's where assisted living comes in play. You know, there's things for them to do, and then you kind of, instead of running around, you know, let me take you food shopping, Mom. Let me get you, make sure the house is clean. And now it's like, let's go to lunch, and let's go shopping and have some fun. Or, hey, there's an event, you know, at Brandywine today. I'm going to join in. You know, as an example, my mom's excited. We have a National Assisted Living Week coming up uh, September 11th. It starts, and Brandywine does a big um Big week of events. It's a competition, fierce competition amongst all the brainy ones. Fierce. <laughs> it's top secret. So, um, you know, we're doing a lip sync competition. Frank and I are performing. You know, um, you can know, we get that like on video? Each, it, it might be on video. There might be some YouTube videos uh, so out there. Ev- there every are. day there's okay. something. Every day there's something. Everybody is so psyched and excited for the different events that are happening. So, you know, it's stuff like that that we feature every day of every month. Not to that magnitude where Frank right. and I dress up and sing and perform, but. You know, we do we do have things that kind of just, I mean, what would they have had if they were home? TV, right? Newspaper, definitely. So. And actually, listening to you talk, it, it sounds like that you know, brandy wine is not just about improving the quality of life of the people who come to live in brandy wine, but it's really the entire family. Yeah, absolutely. You actually get it. Yeah, I, I get it. See, <laughs> okay, we're done. Yeah. Have a good nice day. Uh, <laughs> but no, but it's about because the way it sounds like you incorporate. Th- the the clients I say the clients but the people living in Brandywine's family into what happens every day in Brandywine. We're not right. just helping the resident; we're also helping the adult children come right. to terms with their changing parent and their changing needs, whether it's physical needs or cognitive. Because we also do have our, um, a memory care program called Reflections within our community. So, um, you know, we're addressing all of those things and trying to help educate. Because it's like, why is my mom doing this? She's not doing it on purpose. She can't do it anymore. Right. She's not able to do it. So, you know, we're, we spend a lot of time. I think sometimes we, we take care of the residents. They're fine. It's Now it's helping the kids catch up to the, where their parents have come to. Yeah, and, it, and I'm sure it is very tough at times. You know, the reality of your parents getting older is difficult. So what we always do, this, since this is live radio, is we throw teasers out there because we want people to come back after the break. So when we come back from the break, I want to talk about the programs you do run at Brandywine. I want to talk about the fact the one thing I noticed was the open living area and a lot of people gathering in there. Mm-hmm. It's not about living in a room. It's about living with a lot of people. And then two, three, I forgot how the fingers <laughs> I was on. Talk about like ratios, because I noticed there was a lot more of one sex than the other. Yes, we're stronger sex. Stronger sex. Mm-hmm. So we will talk about that. We'll be back in the moment. Please remember, join the conversation, 732-505-1160. Get more Wake Up with Jeremy Gronin at our website, wobmam.com. News Talk Radio, WOBM, AM 1160 and 1310. Good morning. Welcome back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. I am Phil Brilliant, substituting for Jeremy, and we are talking to Linda Keating, the Director of Community Relations, and Frank Evigan, the Executive Director of Brandywine Living of Tom's River. And we went to break, and we threw a couple teasers out there. Let's talk about programming first. Tell us about the programs that you run, uh, what people expect 
at Brandywine. And uh, because again, when I was there, listening to the program, there was I wanted to move in. (laughs) I was ready. So tell us a little bit about what happens there. We have rooms open. (laughs) Okay, ready. Um, Very good to know. (laughs) uh, Regarding programs, our uh, CEO a, a while back had actually changed it to again where most concepts just do activities each day and. You have your daily uh, bingo or board game and things like that. And she enhanced it by calling our programming at Brandywine Escapades for Life. And the name of it is Enhanced, but there's meaning behind it because we have 13 signature programs that we utilize um, throughout the day. It it's, doesn't have to be cookie cutter in every community, but the concepts all jive together. So come fall time, we're hitting football season. We have tailgaters parties where... We've got uh, great little hors d'oeuvres and beer for the gentlemen and a room set up for them to watch it. Of course, women are involved as well. Um, Yeah, football. (laughs) um, You know, in our community, um, bingo is huge for us. We actually have our room right off of our therapy suite that is a full known bingo room. Uh, You know, we cannot mess anything around our schedule Mm -hmm. with bingo. We probably have about 20 (laughs) to 30 residents that partake throughout each week with the bingo programming. But most importantly, they bring in um, a lot of programming, some talks about history and really getting the mind, body, and spirit still active and and vibrant in the community that they don't just have to read off something or do something. It's very interactive. In our community, we have um, music every Thursday. We have someone live come in and play music with the residents, get the residents up and dancing. We do karaoke. Um, we call it our center stage, like, right. have, you know, some kind of a performance, you know, uh, a group, not just some more, someone who's really interactive and, you know, obviously targeting the music that they're, that they enjoy and it gets wild. It does get wild. There's some dancing with Frank. So with on. Frank's doing dancing? <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah. Frank frequently. Dancing. Frequently. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All, right. All yeah. right. Now the, um, you said football, so I got to ask you the question. Any chance you guys are showing the Rutgers Washington game on Saturday? I heard you ask that when I was on my way driving here, and uh, I don't know if we are. I don't want to say we have are. Have to look into that because maybe I, maybe I have a place to go on <laughs> you Saturday. You might have a place, and then you could even stay over for the night <laughs> they, have dinner. Well, it's a two o'clock game, so hopefully, yeah. uh, hopefully, I can drive home at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, though I have I have hung out sometimes with uh, some. Uh, I'm the um, president of a local synagogue here in town, actually right down the street from you on Old Freehold Road, the Congregation mm-hmm. B'nai Israel. And uh, I have uh, hung out with some of the seniors there, and uh, they have showed me that I cannot drink. Mm. So uh, definitely, uh, definitely. Now, we're talking a little bit about, I, I kind of teased a little, um, the ratio of men to women. What is that ratio? In our community, I'd say 70 30. It's 70-30. Yeah. could be at 85-15 at times. It all depends. It does fluctuate. Women you know? to men. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. and then we'll have married couples, and then that'll change. And uh, But, yes, there's always more women. No matter where you, what community you look at, um, there's always more women. And we're, we're blessed that we have a, no, uh, quite a few men in our building. I mean, so many mm-hmm. so that we have a men's club that actually Frank um, will run and go. they'll head over to Blue Claws. Um, Tusk, is it Tuscan House? Tuscan, Tuscan Bistro. Bistro yep. You know, they've done a night out there. We um, went to the office for lunch one day. Yeah, the office lounge. Kicked back, had some beers and burgers. And yeah. Like, so it's it's been nice, especially having a, a male executive director. It's They love that. Yeah, it's funny, too, because I had a conversation with somebody at the facility that day, mm-hmm. and I was saying, I was like, well, there's a lot of women here. Mm-hmm. I mean, taking I could, over the world. Yeah, but I could, <laughs> I could definitely see that if you are a male senior and you are looking for a place, that would be where I would go. Mm-hmm. I mean, because that definitely seems to the the life of the party. And somewhere, if you have music on every Thursday night, you know you got somebody to dance with and somebody to hang out with. And uh, so we're going to get ready to go to break. But real quick, I wanted to hit. Well, actually, I guess we're going to go to break because I hear the music coming on in my headphones, which you can't hear, but I do hear it coming on. When we come back from the break, I want to talk a little bit more about the layout of the building, the open areas, and also you just mentioned real quick that you have some married couples. Mm-hmm. So it's not just about being a single. In, uh, in a living assisted living center, but also going there as a couple. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160, back after the news. The news never stops at WOBMAM.com. Get the latest from WOBM News, the Town Square, New Jersey News Network, and Fox News Radio. Wake up with Jeremy Gronin, News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. 
Live from the Jersey Shore to the world. Get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Take the show wherever you go. Download the free Radio Pub app for your smartphone or tablet. Join the conversation. 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Good morning. Welcome back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin on Thursday, September 1st. It is 6.33. It is time to get up, get out, and do something on this rainy Thursday morning. High will be at 75 today. And we are joined in the studio here by Linda Keating, the Director of Community Relations, and Frank Evigan, the Executive Director of Brandywine Living of Tom's River. And during the break, we were talking about how I can move in there. And uh, because it does sound like a great place. And I think you know, what we were really talking a lot about was um, talking about how people come to you, uh, how many facilities you have throughout the, I'll say the tri-state, but the greater tri-state area, the greater area, um, as well as the fact of what makes you stand differently, uh, higher and above all of the rest. So let's let's talk a bit about that. You know, tell us, um, you know, what makes you different than the other facilities, and also, you know, uh, we went to break talking about the fact that it's not all about being single. You have married couples that are in your facility too. Yes, we do. Um, we actually have one of our uh, couples that moved in about seven months ago. I'd say six, seven months ago, that just celebrated their sixty eighth wedding anniversary. Wow! And um, again talk about separation and program from others and Linda hit on it before, but national assisted living week, which is throughout all of assisted livings, every company joins in, they do fun things. Um, we go wild and crazy for <laughs> sure. Maybe not at this hour, but uh, <laughs> once we get our events going, what do you mean? We're wild and, and crazy every morning. That's right. You guys are. You're yeah. used we need to four it. more cups um, of coffee. <laughs> yeah. But, um, we're doing a, a really fun event for this couple that just hit their 60th wedding anniversary, and we've actually are having a, a bachelor and bachelorette party for them, and they're going to be getting married by an Elvis and doing kind of a casino themed wedding. I'm not giving like anything out because the flyers are going out already. Uh, I was going to say, are they listening? Yeah. So they now they know yeah. the secret. The secret's <laughs> out. But who cares at this point? We're <laughs> yeah. excited about it because it really. The next week, uh, we started on the 11th, on Sunday, on Grandparents' Day. Um, but it really gets everybody excited, the residents, the staff, the families, and it's a huge participation across the board. And although our company does a big competition and we're all competing against one another, it's really about having fun. And, you know, with the theme of this year with Keep Connected, it's a lot of fun because our, a lot of our residents are getting to – utilize or move it when they move in and of that younger generation and they're moving in wanting to know if we have wi-fi wanting to know if we if you know their ipads and things like that and it's going to be a lot of fun that's all i can say so we're that, excited that sounds great sounds like a lot of fun i don't want to know the plans for the bachelor bachelor no, party you don't. please leave that out yeah we have but, to what yeah. happens in vegas stays in vegas exactly. that's right but zach might be available if you need him mm -hmm. for an event you know we could always uh, talk to zach he's he's the young one of the group here i'll keep uh, quiet over here yeah he's quiet he can liven up any party um <laughs> but you know so you know married couples singles everybody mingling together and having a good time and you know we talked a little bit before it's not just about the quality of living for the people who live in brandywine mm -hmm. but it's about the whole family it's about really in, in this is a new family for a lot of people and people i'm sure at times people don't always get along in their family um, but most of the times i guess in brandywine you know your your goals your objectives is really about the people who are living in that in your facility mm -hmm. you know um, this is the time. This is a very special time at the uh, Jeremy Grun and wake up for wake up for a great area. I forgot what we were doing this morning. Um, <laughs> wake up with Jeremy Grun that we hand out the Jeremy Grun and magic wand. OK, and this magic wand gives you the opportunity with unlimited resources. We'll put some fairy dust on Jeez. you, you know, to change <laughs> your sector. Like <laughs> yes. Change your sector, change your facility, change the world. What would you do if you have unlimited resources to help your clientele, help yourself or help the world, awareness, whatever it may be? I'm going on because both of them are thinking very heavily right now, so I'm giving them the opportunity to think as I speak. You know, If you had this magic wand, and we're going to give out two of them, one to each of you, what would you do with it? So we'll start with Frank since he was late this morning. Yes. 
Oh, man. I, I had to drive thing. further in, but I had to change one thing um, about the senior living industry first. I think it truly – and it, it's kind of tricky because it doesn't resonate with the way that I feel about Brandywine because mm-hmm. I really feel that Brandywine gets it and owns it. But let's face it, we're in the mid-Atlantic region. We're not all across the country um, oversaturating ourselves. We really focus on – how we could do it best, where we're going to do it best, and how we deliver those services without ever jeopardizing our integrity or brand. My advice for the senior living industry out there is to, um, if I could change one thing, it's it's really getting back to the quality for every senior. You know, um, it's unfortunate that today so many seniors are getting diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia, early onset, quality of life, um, and I really think you have to understand the person and what they're going through and utilize the best services that are out there. Um, I think that everybody just goes with the theme and goes with, the, uh, uh, I keep using the expression, but it's a truth, a cookie cutter feel of this is how we do it, A, B, and C. But you're really not taking the time to get to know the resident and their life story. You know, you have an 89-year-old person moving into your community They've had 89 years of a great life, both victories, struggles, tears, joy, laughter. You have to know who that person is. And I can say that being able to not only not only being with Brandywine, but also being with other companies and and learning about assisted living. If I could change one thing, it's that every single team member, every single person that exists in each company really owns and leads the example of getting to know each resident for who they are, who they were, and continue with their life story and share it with everybody. Wow. Linda, that's a tough act to follow. I'm not even going to follow that. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I I understand what you're saying because, you know, oftentimes I have families that are obviously looking at us as a community and then other, other communities as well. And you know, it's not, and I feel like they're looking at it as almost like purchasing a car. And I, my my magic wand would be just kind of, you know, like you said, like throwing that that education out there. And you have to f- find the community that has the heart, that has the desire, that's li- listening to their needs, listening to their needs mentally, physically, financially. You know, we 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 do take that time. And I, and my other wish is that you know, obviously, not everybody has the funding for a brandy wine. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and fortunately here in New Jersey, we do have the Medicaid program, which we do participate in. Um, and you know, while we guarantee it for accepting someone that they can stay with us under Medicaid, it's just like the others that don't, and then give us a bad name, like the other assisted livings who don't, you know, provide the right service. And, and there's this whole ethical thing that happens and folds right. and then kind of tarnishes it carries the forward. People it think tarnishes the, same the industry. Cause you know, yeah. we have a lot of both Frank and I feel that we truly have a great integrity for what we do. And, you know, each situation that comes through, we really try to, you know, handle it right. Cause you know, we're, I, you know, I'm local. These families are local. You know, I, I, last night I was at the blue claws, ran into one of my old family members and it was nice for them to go, Oh my God, I miss you. As opposed to go, you, you know, yeah. and, <laughs> it was, it was, it's wonderful. So, but yeah, that's, and I'll piggyback on that real quick because, uh, again, you, it, the thing that I love most about Brandywine is we're not about being the biggest. We're about being the best. And there have been examples both for myself personally with family members as well as Linda where we all have a direct line to our CEO. And she's changed mm-hmm. lives for our family members being able to move into our communities that didn't have the same income that others do and still have that quality of life and still have all the amenities and services that we provide. And where is Brandywine of Tom's River? At 1587 Old Freehold Road. And how do people get a hold of you? They just call me anytime. 732-240-0043. Call anytime, um, seven days a week. Uh, someone will get a hold of me, and I will always call you back. And website, do you remember? Uh, it's www.brandycare.com, and you just uh, under Ocean County because we do have other f- communities. Uh, just click on Tom's River, and you'll get to see Frank and I our pictures up there. 
I do see your pictures up there because I am looking at you on the computer. Okay. I do appreciate Frank, Frank Evergan, Executive Director of Brandy Wine Living of Tom's River, as well as Linda Keating, the Director of Community Relations. Thank you for getting up this morning and joining us. We'll be back in a moment.